During this video, we are going to create a funnel from scratch. We're going to walk through the entire process from beginning to end. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. What I've done so far is I've clicked on Funnel Builder on the left hand side. Now, once we're here at the very top, I'm going to click on Add Funnel right there. I'm going to click on that. And the first option that we have here is to select which type of funnel we would like to create. We have an opt-in funnel, a sales funnel, a product launch funnel, and a webinar funnel. Well, I'm going to get started with an opt-in funnel. So I'm going to click on that. Then I'm going to click on next. From here, we can choose if we're going to have any upsells or any downsells. And we can click in here and we can simply change the number just like that. Well, I am doing an opt-in funnel, so I'm going to leave mine at one upsell and we'll say zero downsells, and I'm going to add an opt-in confirmation page. After that, I'm going to click on next, and now we need to give this a name. So I'm going to call this my first opt-in funnel. After that, I'm going to click on build funnel. Right away, we can see that our funnel has been created. We have our squeeze page the confirmation page where it asks them to confirm their email, an upsell number one, and a thank you page. And right off the bat, I don't like the idea of them being redirected to the confirmation email page. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the trash can on the right hand side, and we are going to delete that page from our funnel. And just like that, we can see it's been deleted. So now we have our squeeze page. When someone opts in, they're gonna be redirected to my upsell page where I can offer them a goodie for a low price. And after that, whether they say yes or no, we're gonna send them to the thank you page where they can access their free download that I promised them on the squeeze page. So now that we have the funnel laid out, what we need to do now is actually customize each one of these pages to match our needs. So to get started, for the squeeze page, on the far right hand side, we're gonna see this little button with four little squares. We're gonna click on that, and that's our template button. We can scroll down here, and now we have to choose a template that we would like to use. So I'm gonna go through here. At the very top, you can see that we have squeeze selected. So by default, we are viewing all the different squeeze pages that we have. We also have sales pages. You could browse those as well. Though that might not be a good idea since this is a squeeze page. We also have a plain template if you would like to start from 100% scratch and build out your template yourself. I'm going to go back to my squeeze pages here. Click on go and let's go ahead and choose a nice little squeeze page. And I am going to go with a simple one over here. Let's choose the middle one. I'm going to mouse over it and simply click on choose. After I do that, our page editor is going to load up and we can see our template is now loaded and we can begin customizing the information on our template. I actually wanna go with something a little bit more basic than this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the gear symbol at the top right. From here, I'm gonna click on change template. Then I'm gonna select my new template. So I'm gonna click on start over and select this one here. And when I do that, we can see we now have our new template here and we can begin customizing it. On the far left hand side, we have this plus symbol. When I click on that, this is going to show me a list of all the different elements that I can add to my page. So the way it works is the first thing we need to do is select one of these types of elements. So for example, right now we have block selected. And when I select block to the right here, we're gonna see a list of the different blocks that we can include in our page. Pretty cool, right? So if I select box, for example, we can see a list of the boxes that I can add to my page. Same thing for button. We see the different buttons and so forth. So if I wanted to add a box, for example, and I wanted this one here, all I have to do is click it and drag it and drop it just like that and it gets added inside of my page. If I change my mind and I don't want it there no more, all I have to do is click on it and then click on the little trash can and it's gone just like so. So let's get started with customizing this text. You are one step away to become successful. All I'm going to do is click inside of this box and then just like that, I can customize my text. So I'm going to say discover my three step system for losing 10 pounds in 30 days. 
Okay, basic little headline there. And of course, along the top here, you're gonna see what is very familiar with you, I assume, on how you can customize this text. So we can change the font size, the font itself, we have the different styles, we can change the color, and so forth. When I am done customizing my headline, I am going to click on Exit Editing. And I actually added an extra R there, so let's go back inside, delete that R, and then click on Exit Editing. After that, we can do the same thing with this little description down here. I can double click inside of that and customize the text and make it say whatever I want it to say. I'm gonna leave it just like it is and I'm gonna click on exit editing. Something else I might wanna do is maybe I want to add an image or a video of my product. So I'm gonna click on the plus symbol here. I am going to click on video and you can see we can add a YouTube video or a Vimeo video. I'm gonna do an image here I'm going to grab the placeholder and we're going to click it and we're going to drag it and we're going to drop it just below my little description and let go. Now, when I want to upload my own image, all I have to do is click on it, click on the little gear symbol, and that's going to bring up my image settings and I can move this around freely. I can browse and upload my image from here. I can choose to keep my aspect ratio and I can add a few styles to my image. We have some formatting settings here and some action settings. So right now we have no action. And what this means is if someone clicks on this image, do you want something to happen? We can redirect them to a URL. We can open up a pop-up or we can submit a form. I'm going to leave mine on no action and we're going to close out of this for now. The next option that we have here is our actual button. And you're going to see right now we don't have a form on this page. There's no place for our visitor to enter their name or their email. And that's because this template is using a pop-up to do so. So to actually edit the pop-up and see what it looks like in the first place, we are going to click on the gear symbol at the top. We are going to go to conversion tools. And then for the pop-up conversion tools, we're gonna to click on enable pop-up. Now, once I do so, down here at the bottom, we're gonna see pop-up and there's gonna be a drop down menu here and there should be one selected by default and that one that you see there is going to be the one that is being used by this page. Now, of course, we can create a brand new pop-up and build it from scratch, but I'm gonna select the one that has been created for us and I'm gonna click on edit right next to it. And when I do so, that's gonna show us the pop-up that the visitor will see when they click on download the report now. And this is what it's gonna look like. So we have a headline, a subheadline, a nice little splitting line here, and the opt-in form. Now to customize the opt-in form, we're gonna click on the form itself. Then we're gonna click on the form settings, which is the gear icon. Now when that opens up the form settings, we can see we have a form name. We can change this if we want to. We can choose whether we want to register this person as a member for our website. Then we have our integration settings. So right now it's not integrated with anything. So we need to choose one of these options. We need to subscribe them to a list, register them to a webinar, do both of those at once or a custom integration. So if I choose subscribe to list, after that, I need to choose the email service that I would like to subscribe them to. And depending on which one you select here, you will need to connect with that service by clicking this button here and that's gonna take you to the integration settings inside of InstaSuite. If you've already integrated your autoresponder with InstaSuite, you will not see this button. Instead, you're gonna see a list of your autoresponder list that you have created inside of that autoresponder. After that, we have a thank you page URL, and we can choose to redirect them somewhere else if we would like. We have some styling options for this opt-in form and some formatting options as well. I'm gonna close out of my form settings. Next, I'm gonna click on the button and then click on the gear icon for the button. Again, for the button settings, we have a bunch of different styling options. We have colors, corners, formattings, icons, and these general options where we can change the text on there, add a subtext, and so forth. What's important for this button though is what you want to happen when someone actually clicks on it. So I'm gonna click on the action tab over here and for our on-click action, we can choose to redirect them to a different URL. We can open up another pop-up form, or we can choose to submit form. So I'm gonna click on submit form, and then for the select form option, 
we need to select the form that we have created right here. So if I jump back here, this is called form underscore ULFWNY. So if I click on this form here, click on the gear icon, go back to my general, we can see that's the name of this form. So when someone fills it out, clicks on this button, they're going to be submitting this form. And then after that, they can continue on through our funnel that we have created. If you wanted to add any elements to this pop-up form, you can do it the same way as we do the page. Simply choose your element from the left-hand side, click it, and then drag it right inside of the pop-up box and let go, and it's gonna be added just like that. I'm gonna go ahead and close out of my pop-up form for now. Take us back here, or I'm gonna close out of my conversion tools, and that's gonna take us back to our squeeze page. If I ever wanted to create another squeeze page to split test against each other, up here at the top left, you can see we have variation A. If I click this drop down menu, I can create a brand new variation and I can duplicate this exact page and make changes to the new one, or I can start with a brand new template and split test those pages. I'm not gonna do that for now, so I'm gonna click on close. And once we have our squeeze page set up the way we like it, I'm gonna click on save at the top here by clicking on this little disc. If I would like to preview what this page looks like, I can click on the eyeball and that's gonna open it up in a new page for me and I can test it out and see exactly what it looks like. But for now, what we're gonna do is we are going to close out of our squeeze page. I'm gonna click on the little X at the top right once I have saved it. That's gonna take us back to our funnel dashboard and the next thing that I need to do is go through upsell number one and then go through the thank you page and choose my template, customize those pages as well, so that way my funnel can be ready to be published. Now, once you are done creating every page that you have inside of your funnel, you need to go through and publish the entire funnel. Now to do so, we are going to click on the edit option to go back into our page. And at the very top right, you're gonna see a big green publish button. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that. And that's gonna publish our page for us. So now I can exit off of this and you can see that we now have this green publish button instead of the draft button. So do that for each of your pages. So that way your entire funnel can be online. Now I have this page URL that I can change at any time if I would like to by clicking on the change button here. And if I copy that, open up a new tab, that's gonna take me directly to my squeeze page. If I click on download report now, fill out this form, click on send me the report, it's gonna redirect me to my OTO upsell page that I have created. All right, so pretty simple to set up, and that is the funnel creation walkthrough video. It's the same way, whether you are creating an opt-in funnel, a sales page funnel, or a webinar funnel, it all works the same way. And I know we didn't cover everything in exact detail, so in the following videos, we're gonna break down even more of the options inside of the page editor and the funnel creation process.